morning or good afternoon. Welcome to Children's Church. I'm so happy to be here with you, no matter what time of day it is that you are uh, doing this lesson with me. We just finished up our series on who God is. We were learning some of God's traits and attributes, such as God is kind, God is loving, God is forgiving. We learned that God is our friend. And last week we learned that God is creator, which is cool because today we're going to be talking more about that in some ways. But we're moving on to a new series about who we are. Now we know a little bit more about who God is. Now let's find out who are we? How did God make us to be? And today we're focusing on how we are God's masterpiece. Like, that's like a beautiful, amazing, artistic creation that God made. And that's you. You're God's masterpiece. And we're going to take a look at that a little bit more today. You only need a couple of items. Today I have my Bible. So if you want to use your Bible, that would be awesome. We're going to be in the book of... Genesis, the very first book of the Bible, and we're going to be in chapter 2. We're also going to look a little bit in Ephesians. You're also going to want to have a piece of paper and a marker. Mine has a fold in it, and you'll see about that in a minute. But, um, so we're going to use paper and marker, and you always need your imagination. All right, so let's look in the Bible, we're learning about who we are, right? Who did God make us to be? So let's look back in the beginning when God made humans and see what we can learn about uh, who we are from that. Okay, I'm going to read verses 4, 5, 6, and 7 of Genesis chapter 2. Remember? Genesis chapter 2, verses 4, 5, 6, and 7. This is what it says. This is the account of the creation of the heavens and the earth. When the Lord God made the heavens and the earth, there were no plants or grain growing on the earth, for the Lord God had not sent any rain yet, and no one was there to cultivate the soil. But water came up out of the ground and watered all the land, and the Lord God formed a man's body from the dust of the ground and breathed into it the breath of life, and the man became a living person. Cool. So God used the dust of the ground and breathed life into Adam to make the first man. Well, we're not God and we can't do that. And your grown ups probably don't want you doing anything with dust or dirt in the house. So we're going to use a piece of paper and a marker. And I want you to fold your piece of paper like this. I think it's called hamburger style by some or like a like a card. And on the front, we're going to draw a stick person, okay? So I'm just going to draw a stick person. All right, here's the person I made. Was your person look nice. Sometimes it's easy to do a stick figure and sometimes even that can be hard. So what can your paper person do? Can your paper person do anything? Can you give a high five? It doesn't even have hands. Um, it can't run or jump. I mean, I can, I can make it go up and down, but it can't really do a whole lot. But that's okay. At least we as humans can do more than that. You can do amazing things. Like you can run and talk and sing and sit and crawl and um, play and color. You can do a lot of amazing things. But God wasn't done creating, um, was he? We're going to keep reading in Genesis chapter 2. I'm going to read verses 18, 19, and 20. The Lord God said, it's not good for the man to be alone. I will make a companion who will help him. So the Lord God formed from the soil every kind of animal and bird, and he brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And Adam chose a name for each one. He gave names to all the livestock, birds, and wild animals. 
but still there is no companion suitable for him. That's so cool that Adam got to name the animals. I, would, I think I would like that job. Well, you're gonna, let's give you that job right now. Let's see if you can rename some of the animals. Like if you had the choice, what name would you give to, let's use these guys. What would you call this animal? What name would you give it? Nice. All right, what about this guy? What would you name this one? <laughs> That's a good one too. Ooh. Let's check out this guy. Now, I have to tell you something. Just a little bit ago, this friend here of mine had a spider on him, but our little spider friend moved on and let him go elsewhere. So, um, but what would you name this animal? He says, thank you. And lastly, what would you name this one? What name would you give this animal? This one's super soft. He's super soft. Those are good. It's kind of fun to get to name animals. Huh? I'm gonna put my little friends back up here. Oh, can they all fit? There you go. Now, there's other animals in the world you could rename. Like, what would you name a skunk? If you couldn't call it a skunk, what would you name it? Maybe stinky. <laughs> or cute. Skunks are so cute with their little faces, they're, and they're, they waddle when they walk. They're actually adorable. Um, so maybe I'd call them fluffy. I don't know. <laughs> what would you call a chicken? If you had to give a chicken a different name, what would you call a chicken? Well, my family and I, we read, I think, every book in the series of The Wizard of Oz. And in that book, there was a chicken named Bill. But Dorothy thought, because it's a girl, that the chicken's name should be Billina instead of Bill. So maybe I would rename the chicken Billina. <laughs> All right, well, it's kind of fun to get to name the animals. And what's amazing is that I mean, Adam had that job, and that would be a cool job to have, but we also are put in charge of helping all the animals and all of creation. So God gave us a really big, important job to help take care of them. Now, God wasn't done creating, so let's see in verses 21, 22, and 23 what he made next. So the Lord God caused Adam to fall into a deep sleep. He took one of Adam's ribs and closed up the place from which he had taken it. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and brought her to Adam. At last, Adam exclaimed, she is part of my own flesh and bone. She will be called woman because she was taken out of a man. So he was excited because even though the animals were super awesome and cool, they weren't quite the same as, as him. So he was really excited when God made um, Eve. So on your paper, I want you to open it up and fold it back over and draw another person. God made Adam and Eve the two, the first two people in the world. And there's my second person. So I have one, two people. Now, they were very special because they were the first two people that God made. But we're also special, even though there have been billions of other people in the world 
And I know that because in Ephesians 2.10, it tells us about that. So Ephesians is way far away from Genesis. This, oh, it's too bright. Focus, focus. Too bright, too bright. I don't know if you can see Ephesians. Ephesians is in the New Testament. And um, it was a letter written to the people in Ephesus. And the people who lived in Ephesus were called Ephesians. Because, like, we live in California, so we're called Californians. So the people in Ephesus were named Ephesians. And Paul wrote this to them. And he said in chapter 2, verse 10, We are God's masterpiece. He has created us new in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. So God has good things that he planned for you to do that only you can do. Now you might think, well, I'm kind of good at math, but other people are good at math too. Well, you're the only person who is you who is good at math. There might be other people who are good at math, but they're not you. And so whatever it is that God has planned for you, it's special for you. And he's put some really amazing, cool things inside of you so that you can do the important things that he has for you. So what I want you to do now, God put some cool things on your outside. He made you look the way you do um, on purpose. When I look at myself, I often see my mom and then sometimes I see my dad in my eyes or in my nose. Um, I hear my mom in my voice sometimes. Um, so on your person on the outside, I want you to draw them to kind of look like you if you can, okay? So I'm gonna add some details to help my person kind of look a little bit like me. And so you can do some details to add to your person. What are you going to put on your person to make it look like you? I have always had straight hair for as long as I can remember, but just recently my hair has gotten kind of wavy, like not a lot, just a little bit wavy. So I added some little waves to my hair. And I'm gonna give myself hands and feet because I didn't at first. So you can add more and more details to the outside of your person so it looks like who you look like on the outside. Um, and then on the inside, on the blank piece on the inside, I want you to write some words <clears throat> or you can have a grown up help you write some of these words if it's hard to write or you don't know how to spell things and it's okay if you don't know how to spell things exactly. <clears throat> but I want you to about what did God put on the inside of you. Maybe you are funny. Maybe you're, you have a good sense of humor. Or maybe you're really kind and you like to help other people. Uh, maybe you're good at math. Or maybe you really like to write. I loved writing as a kid. I want you to write down or have your grown-up help you write down some things that you're good at. Um, some things that make you who you are. And if you want, you can use part of this verse. Oh, is it gonna to be too difficult to see with the light, with the bright light? There's Ephesians 2.10, right there. Oh, can I get it to focus? Probably not. Well, if you have it in front of you, you can use it. it says, that he created us new in Christ Jesus so that we can do good things. Uh, so you can put any of those words in there too if you want. Like I'm going to put the word created, that I was created. That I've been made new. I'm going to put that um, 
I'm compassionate. That's a big word with a lot of letters. Ooh, barely had space to write it. Compassionate means like I really care a lot for others and particularly for animals. I have strong emotions. God made me to have really strong feelings and I used to be frustrated by that and then I realized that's how God made me and so I'm learning to use them the right way. And God said that I am good when he made me. I think sometimes I can be funny and clever. <laughs> At least I do. I don't know. You write down the things that you think that God put on the inside of you. So here's me on the outside. And here's some of me on the inside. Well, as you finish drawing your portrait. I want you to know, oh, one more thing I'm going to put in here. It said that I'm God's masterpiece. Right there. I'm going to put masterpiece in here. Right there. Um, so as you finish up your drawings, which might be a type of a masterpiece in itself. I want you to think about the fact that God made you special. He made you unique and amazing. And that God said when he made you, he said, you are good and he has good plans for you. And when we trust in Jesus and listen to Jesus, he will guide us into knowing what those plans are little by little. And you are just amazing. Are you perfect? No. That's who God is. God is holy and God is perfect and we're not. We're not perfect. But that's okay because of Jesus. Jesus helps us to be forgiven and loved. And let's pray and thank God that he, when he made us, he was like, wow, you're amazing. You're a masterpiece. All right, let's pray. Open and close, open and close. Give your hands a clap. Open and close, open and close, fold them in your lap. Dear God, thank you that you have made us special and amazing, that we're your masterpiece. And sometimes it's hard to see that, God, because sometimes we just think about the things that we struggle with or the things that we're not good at. But God, open our eyes and help us to see all the good things you put in us and all the good plans you have for us. Maybe we don't get to see all the good plans, but help us to see some of them. Um, and help us to see all the good things you put inside of us. And help us to see all the good things you put inside of other people too. We thank you, we love you, and pray all this in Jesus' name and all God's children said, amen. All right, I love you, I'll see you soon. Bye.